Morning ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, it's actually just afternoon. Sunday afternoon, the 29th today I believe it is. We're on British summer time now. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I hope this lockdown isn't getting anyone down. I know it's quite difficult. It's difficult for us. We haven't actually been out of the village other than walking around for ooh, over a week now really. I think Sarah, I had to go yesterday to get some vet uh, things for Ozzy because he had a problem and uh, they kindly gave us some uh, antibiotics and some food. Uh, but other than that, which is about a five mile round trip to the local uh, vets, which is in Paddock Wood, um, we're coping quite well, I think, and hopefully you guys are as well. Um, I'm going to do a video now. I don't know how long it'll take to go through this, but I watched Thomas Heaton um, last week. Uh, he put a video out and he, he put across a product called Lumenzia, which is a Photoshop plugin that allows you to do um, its uh, luminosity masking, which I know certainly for me, and I think quite a few people, has proved to be quite a curious concept. Um, it's difficult to master it. It seems to be one of those really, really hard things that people seem to have a mental block about. Um, but it's very powerful. And Lumenzia, which I think cost me about £19 uh, to download it and to have it for a perpetual license, um, it's simplified it dramatically. Um, in essence, what luminosity masking does is it allows you to take parts of the picture that are in particular levels of light and then mask just those areas and then work on changing the saturation or whatever other prop properties you want to change but only applied to the areas that are actually selected and you can choose bright areas, dark areas, middle areas, you can choose all sorts of different areas with this tool. And I found it, um, I downloaded it and I played with it for an hour or two and I thought actually this has simplified luminosity masking and also made me understand exactly what it is that it's doing. I had a, a basic idea before, but um, this simplifies it quite nicely. And therefore I thought, well, there might be other people out there that uh, could benefit from using this, that have been put off from using Lightroom, uh, sorry, uh, Photoshop in this way, because um, it's quite easy to get locked into using Lightroom and to sort of uh, leave Photoshop behind. And I know the photographic package, uh, subscription package for Adobe for photographers um, includes both products. So it seems a shame that the really powerful capabilities of Photoshop are not pressed into more service by more people. And I think if you tried this, you might well find it um, explains a lot and simplifies it as I did. So I'm going to switch across to screencasting and I'll take you through a image that's got quite a lot of dynamic range in it and I'll show you Lumenzia working uh, and see what you think and if you like it or don't like it, whichever, uh, comment as appropriately uh, and I hope you enjoy watching it. So let's get on with it. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. Um, I've got an image from yesterday morning that I took. I've done a few very basic sort of alterations to it, nothing much at all. A few bits of levels, bit of colour changing, but nothing much. Um, it's against the sun, it's a silhouette of a tree, but I want to bring the details out in the tree itself, in the trunk of the tree more, so that it's more obvious um, and more representative of what my eye actually saw when I was there taking the picture. Uh, but as you can imagine, the sun's so bright that it's actually caused the camera to massively um, underexpose the, the rest of the image. So the data is probably there, but it's just not, um, it's not visible. It's just turned into shadow. So what we'll do is we'll take this picture into Photoshop now, and I'll do that edit it in Photoshop 2020 and hopefully all being equal it will load up it will pull a screen up and here we go not the fastest computer in the world unfortunately even though it's an i9 processor with 64 gigabytes of RAM um, the aforementioned Lumenzia it's already pulled the panel up here it's loaded the panel and although we still appear to be in Lightroom because it hasn't switched across to Photoshop. Our Photoshop's over here, so let's just make this window full size. That's it. So, okay, we've now got Photoshop with the image in it and it's automatically loaded the Lumenzia uh, panel here. 
Now if I just briefly run through what this panel's got on it, this area at the top here has got uh, D, M and L. D dark, M middle, L light. Dark shades, middle shades, light shades. And underneath each of these there's D1s, D2s, DM1s, DM2s and so on. Basically the left hand side indicates dark and the right hand side indicates light. So if I choose to select the light part of the image you'll see in the masking and the layers section here it's created a bunch of layers um, automatically. I didn't have to do anything and it's marked these in green to show that it's active. Now what that's done is it's turned the picture black and white and because it's black and white the masking is that any changes I make will happen on the area that is white or light shades, uh, for instance the sky areas. So let me just demonstrate that by um, applying a layer change to here. Let's change the brightness. So we'll click on the brightness um, indicator here on Lumensia and it's going off and creating hopefully a layer that I can work with. It's applied all that masking to the image and notice it's come back to colour again and it's also pulled up the brightness and contrast um, dialog box here which goes with clicking the uh, little sun black to white sunshine symbol up here that's the only way I can describe it. So if I now alter the brightness you'll see that what it's doing is it's applying dark to light but it's only affecting the area of the screen that was selected and bear in mind that was the sky it's not having any effect on the tree so let me wind this to the level I want it and let's say there and let's say I'm happy that that I'll just turn the contrast up a bit to bring a bit more color out in the sky I know there's some rather odd fringing here but let's ignore that for the moment so I'm quite happy with that that's done what I wanted to do. Now I want to select the dark area so if I click on D for dark it will now go off and create a whole bunch of um, different layers here automatically and again the white areas are the areas that will be affected by any changes I make and the darker areas including the sun and the sky are less affected. Now this is the D but I don't want it to be D I want to be more specific and be quite dark D. Now I've chosen one of the D's underneath here in this case D4 notice the little green slide has gone up and down so you've got as much granularity as you want here you can move it to any value and it will adjust the masking. Now as you can see all of the white areas are the tree the tree trunk and the foreground the sky is black so any changes I do will have little or no effect or absolutely no effect on the uh, darker areas being the sky so let me select the um, brightness and contrast tool again there are all sorts of different tools here there's obviously the levels tool and the uh, the curves tool and you can dodge you can vignette and you can sharpen different areas and so on and so forth but it's done the same thing it did before it's actually applied that and I now have a mask defined here for this brightness and contrast um, slider so this should only affect the areas that were selected which are in white down here which is the tree and the foreground uh, so just to prove the point the sky is remaining unchanged and yet the darker areas ie the tree and the shrubbery on the other side of the road is now being affected and lo and behold I've now got detail in the trunk of the tree which is what my objective was in this and let's just play with the contrast and I'll select quite a low contrast there so that I get as much light in the tree as possible and in principle that is exactly what Lumenzia does so as you can see Lumenzia made it really very easy for me to take control of this image in Photoshop and actually make some basic changes to it to get to a particular point. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot of other uh, capabilities of it because there's an awful lot of learning resource on the internet on YouTube on how to use it and how to achieve different effects with it. I just wanted to introduce it and I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I bought it with my own money and um, I just found it a valuable little addition to 
my uh, repertoire of things that I've got within um, Photoshop. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, please go and research it further yourselves and see if it's something you're interested in. Um, I personally will be using this quite a bit moving forward because I think it just saves me quite a bit of time messing around masking things manually myself. Anyway, I uh, hope you found that uh, of some value and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and please also subscribe so that you get notified when I upload new videos.